Hi, everybody. So I want to talk about the energetic, the energetics of our personal archetypes. And as we really understand and own the fact that everything is energy, we can look at ourselves and look at aspects of our personality and ways we're relating, ways we are talking to ourselves um, archetypally. And we can look at this, we can look at archetypes as an energy simply as an energy. So just like our personal energy system is our chakra system, we can think about archetypes as wheels of energy in our personality orbit. We can also recognize them in other people in certain situations and navigate things that um, create struggles and drama in our life with much more grounded, uh, resourceful tools. And we can also when we're looking at these archetypes and working with them, we can get a sense of how they feel in our body. Like, how do you feel when you know that you're in your mystic archetype? How do you feel when you know that you're in uh, a wounded archetype or a victim archetype? When you have like a poor me mentality, how does that feel to you? Um, how does it feel to you to be in a rebel archetype? and to kind of go against the grain and to say something that might shock other people, but something that you feel really deeply passionate about. How does that feel to you? And when you are interacting with someone with, who has a bully archetype or a narcissist archetype or some kind of perpetrator archetype that's invasive, that doesn't feel good, that makes us question our reality, question our value system, question our worthiness, how does that feel? And sometimes we can feel helpless or feel confused and not really just only know to only know to kind of walk away or tiptoe away but with with archetypes i've learned how to directly communicate to it how to directly hold boundaries with it how to um recognize my own like when i was talking poor me mentality victim mindset how to not judge myself for that mentality and just recognize that I have some healing work to do in this certain area. So this is an, a, a way to create so much self-compassion, create a, a time and space for healing work, to set boundaries with other people in certain situations that are not serving us, to recognize where we might feel a sense of obligation or lack of worthiness and to even take it a step further and say like that's like obligation and lack of worthiness are things that I don't want to participate in anymore and I've got to make some changes I've got to have hard conversations and create new situations new boundaries so I can be the biggest version of myself so like uh, our chakras, like our energy, um, like our wheels of energy in our body. We can look at this with the archetypes and understand that they are multidimensional. They all have shadow sides and the highest potential sides, but they all have a fundamental desire. So no matter what, if we recognize some kind of shadow, we know that there's a neutral desire, something good about it. And that it also, once we do our healing work and work with the shadow aspects and really own them uh, we can live in the potential of them and a lot of us like when i start talking about shadow work people might have an aversion to that because it sounds dark and i don't know, scary or something i don't know but it's really like sacred shadow work is so important these days so we can really face things that are holding us back we can stop blaming other things and situations and people for reasons we are stuck. We can say, I actively participate in the story. This thing happened to me a long time ago, but I'm still letting it hold me back. That thing that happened to me a long time ago wasn't my fault, but right now I don't have to let it affect me today. So doing this kind of work is really, really grounding and helps to support owning our authentic archetypes, the authentic part of ourself and showing up in the world like this. I love to start this process with people. 
in helping them recognize all the archetypes in, in their highest version of themselves, in the ultimate, most authentic parts of who they are. And then we can start to look at what are the things, the situations, the relationships, the personal self dialogue, the inner talk that holds us back in these moments where we want to be more expressive in this way, but we show up or we let these kind of uh, personality attributes or, or situations hold us back. What are we saying to ourselves? What are the reasons and excuses? What comes up for us that holds us back? And how do these things benefit us? Because ultimately, when we have a poor me mindset, we are enabling ourselves to numb, to um, not be seen. Because when we want to step into our full expression, it's going to take putting ourselves out there more, uh, being criticized by others. You know, it takes some rearranging with certain relationships and it also takes um, developing thicker skin or just really understanding that when we show up fuller and more expressive, we're going to feel backlash about that. So there's, there's a lot of benefits in playing small. Our self-sabotage, our saboteur archetype can be really strong that way. Just like, no, just stick to the nine to five job, just get the paycheck, eat the basic food, go, you know, just stay in survival mode because anything outside of this is uncomfortable and scary. So we have to fight that self self-sabotage and our saboteur archetype. We really got to recognize the languaging it uses and how it does hold us back and how we give into it, how we agree with it. Like, you're right, this is scary and I'm not gonna do it today. So if we want to live it more authentically expressive, we've got to take, we've got to face our saboteur archetype head on. That's the first thing we have to do is get very visual get very clear with who we are or the the authentic archetypes that we really love the most about ourselves and those people that we might not see enough but when we see them we're like it's like coming home or those situations those places that when it, the event happens it's like a, a feeling of just like yes these are my people what is it about those people and those places and these events that really uh ring you know, open your, your, to help you feel like so connected, like, yes, this is my thing. This is my element. What is that? When we start to talk about archetypes, they're going to be the most obvious, basic things. And we're probably a lot of times not using this languaging. Like, yes, I definitely have a strong rebel archetype. I definitely am an advocate. I I want to speak up for people who can't be, who don't feel like they have a voice to speak. I have a platform to do that, so I, I defend. Or I um, really enjoy deep philosophical conversations and I can't stand superficial conversation. When I meet people who, don't, who skip the small talk and go right to the depth, those are my people. That's what lights me up in relating to people. Um, so what are those for you? And if you start to list them, the, my favorite uh, author on the subject of archetypes is Carolyn Mays, and she talks a lot about how we have 12 to 18 core archetypes. And if you start to list them, you'll, you'll probably get over 20, but then you can kind of analyze like what shows up for me daily. And we're gonna start to look at like these survival archetypes. There's survival archetypes that everybody has, four survival archetypes that Carolyn Mays talks a lot about. And a lot of times we're living in survival mode. We're living in survival archetype mode. And when we are showing up with our wounded child and showing up with our victim and feeling like uh, we need to take less money and feeling this like unworthiness, this prostitute archetype. And when we're feeling like we just can't get out of it, we have to stay in this survival place because getting out of it is uncomfortable and somewhat um, scary. That's our saboteur archetype. Those are the four archetypes of survival that we're 
when we're constantly living in the survival mode, we're not allowing our authentic archetypes to shine through, to come in, to express, to relate to other people. So doing this shadow work and this healing work is going to be the, the roots in the ground to give us foundation, to give us strength, to let our authentic, higher vibrational archetypes to show and to relate and to be in the world. So this is how, these are the first few steps of how I like to work with people. And then I like to get the anchor, the feeling in the body. How do you feel when you're in your mother archetype? How do you feel when you're nurturing other people? Whether you have children or not, when you're in nurturing, when you're watering your plants or communicating with, your, with pets, when you're cooking food for your friends, how does that feel to you? What does it mean to you to be an alchemist? How does taking a certain thing and transforming it into something that works for you in a better way, what does that feel like to you? Where is that in your body? How, is that, how does that show up in your physical experience? When you know that you're in, um, you know, when you're feeling disconnected, when you feel like you don't belong, this orphan archetype, this orphan child archetype is showing up where do you feel that where do you feel like you don't belong when you're in a room and you're having a hard time relating to anybody what is the physical anchor of that and then when you're in a room and you have you feel connection and belonging where do you feel that and that's where breath work can come into play like breathing into those places that need healing and breathing into the places that are feel connected and open and feel good, feel yummy. So practicing putting our hands in those places, breathing into those places and helping them to alchemize, helping them to open, helping them to balance each other out. Um, and that's the physical practice of this. And also there's something about being able to cultivate the observer, being able to observe yourself in habits and situations that are holding you back, that you've been struggling with, that you're aware of, that you've been struggling with, and being able to have a neutral perspective of it and being able to stand outside of judgment, to be able to hold space for it, to offer yourself all the time and love and um, healing that it needs in the moment and to even witness yourself in the moment when it's happening without judgment to neutrally observe yourself in these moments of like i'm just gonna sit here and stare at netflix or i am just going to i'm, I'm engaging in gossip right now and i'm observing it I don't judge myself. I know I need to stop doing, like I need to stop relating with people this way. But the first step is to really just neutralize and then alchemize. I've never said that before, but that's good. So to really be in this place of maintaining this neutral observational archetype in situations that aren't working for you. And to be able to hold space in those moments and then to work with it. And then I like to go back to the spiritual archetypes, the higher vibrational archetypes, and then work with grounding them even further. And what kind of daily routines, what kind of practice do you need to be implementing in your morning and in your evening? when you can start your day and really ground into these archetypes this is what it feels like to be mystical to be witchy to be a goddess to be in this uh to just be feeling spiritually connected very excited about my human body my human experience say i have work to do and I am capable of doing this. I'm so excited to do this work, to own it and to ground into it in the morning, to leave the house or whatever, like interact with people, your day goes on and then something, you, something triggers you or just um, something de um, 
depletes you, you feel pulled out of your core, what are your tells? What are your physical tells about that? How does that feel in your body? And how can you, in the moment, like what can you do to stop it maybe? Or if you notice after, how do you recharge in the moment? How do you go back to balance in those moments? And this is how I like to work with people. I can support you with resources um, and with coming up with your own answers, of course. That's my first, I love to help you with what you already know, but there's lots of other things that we can do to, to work with moving, bringing our energy back in and holding ourselves in this safe, vibrant container of energy, knowing how we get depleted and how we get refueled. refueled. So I am working on a course. I did a course of, it was a automated course, digital course, and I want to try something new and do a full live course. So it will be four weeks. It will be two hour uh, live classes. It's going to be 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time because that's 7 p.m. where I live in Israel. So, and then I believe that is 12 p.m. East, Eastern time. So I want to start it May 20th, two days before the new moon in Gemini, which is a great time to work with our mindset, to work with how, um, to just work with reorganizing our thought patterns and to create mental patterns that work for us. And it will be four meetings. And I will supply, a, I will create a Facebook group and um, add in video workshops and worksheets and journal prompts for you to support the work throughout the week. It is four weeks. It is 100 US dollars or 350 uh, shekels for local people in Israel. And that's what I I'm working on. I'm really excited to offer this. And if you are interested in joining me, just send me a message. Actually, I will link the information in this video below. And I'm happy to be doing this work and happy to support you with grounding your authentic archetypes. Talk to you later.